and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back with some more goodies from my vintage and antique ephemera collection. So I've got a little stack right here and let's get started. So the first one that's on top, oh by the way, I apologize if the lighting is not so great. It's a really cloudy day here. So I did increase the brightness on my camera but sometimes that affects the quality of the video. So hopefully everything will be okay. Oh, let me take this out of plastic. So this first one is this little, I guess, information like brochure from the world's Colombian exposition and this is what it looks like it's so pretty so vibrant and right here it says compliments of California fake syrup co San Francisco California Louisville Kentucky and New York New York so when you open it up it looks like this and it says knowledge and I think this is just one really really long ad for that um, fig syrup on the front since I'm assuming they're the ones who sponsored like this little brochure. And then on the next page, it says important information concerning the world's Colombian exposition. And the reason why I decided to keep this in my collection, I'm pretty sure, and pick it up in the first place is because I was really interested in the um, world's exposition. I'm pretty sure this is the one that um, happened in the late 1800s in Chicago. Yeah, it says wonderful city of Chicago. Um, but yeah, so it was basically like a huge world fair and it was like huge in Chicago and what I remember hearing about it from is when I watched documentaries on the first serial killer H.H. Holmes and I'm pretty sure this is the same exposition where he started kind of collecting people to kill <laughs> in his little like murder home if you've never heard of him definitely go watch it. there's a few um documentaries on him on Netflix that are pretty interesting and yeah so in the late 1800s um, there was this huge world fair in Chicago and it was just like the perfect time to get his victims because so many people there you know communication wasn't like how it is now where you can just call someone on their cell phone and see where they're at so people from all over the world were flocking to that fair and they needed places to stay and he had a home that he i believe had like rooms rented out to people and he would kill people and they would go missing and you know their family members wouldn't even know until like months later because people actually it was pretty common for people to go missing during this little fair so I mean it was pretty dangerous back then to be going to these things because your family wouldn't even know that you went missing for months later until you didn't come back so it was all just really interesting to me so I decided to pick this up I'm pretty sure that is what this is and I'm really really interested in all of that kind of stuff so I kept this in my collection this right here it tells you how to reach the um, exposition grounds so it's pretty cool. The entrance right there is 57th and 62nd Street, pier entrance. Admission will be 50 cents during the exposition from May 1st to October 30th, 1893. Before the time, visitors will be charged 25 cents admission to the grounds. So yeah, I'm 100% sure now that this is the World's Fair that um, they were talking about because I'm pretty sure this is around the time that H.H. Holmes was around. But anyways, that was just like a quick little tidbit of why I was so intrigued by this. So this next page looks like this and it says the Manufacturers and Liberal Arts Building. So it says that it is the largest structure ever erected in the world, being three times as large as St. Peter's at Rome. So I'm pretty sure that's not the case anymore. Ooh, the cost back then was 1,700,000. I could just imagine what the price is now because this is from the 1800s. So I could just imagine. But this just talks about a bunch of the buildings. Oh, sorry, I'm holding it crooked again. You know, I always stand to the side of my camera when I film these and I always end up holding the papers like a little crooked, so I'm sorry. And then this next page, it says The Modern Way. And there's just some more ad for the fig syrup. So this also opens up like this. So there's some more pages in here and it has the agricultural building right there. And it says it's one of the handsomest of the exposition. Its style is classic Renaissance designed by McKim, Mead, and White, New York. I wonder why they have the cost of all the buildings that were in um, the exposition. I don't know if that was part of it, like they were showing off the buildings maybe. So this one is the horticulture building. And 
I can see my camera going in and out of focus. Sorry about that, it's probably because of the lighting. Oh, and again, yours truly, California Fig Syrup Co. And then this is the little back picture on here. And it's just such a great quality. I loved it. I fell in love with the colors immediately when I saw it. So I had to pick it up because I was really interested in that. And this is one of those things that I actually kind of felt connected to because I had done so much, not research, but I've just watched so much on this little um, World's Fair. So I was just really interested in that. So. The next thing in this little pile is the Declaration of Independence and Constitution of the United States of America, and this was distributed by the National Americanism Commission, the American Legion from Indianapolis, Indiana. And I don't know, I think it's like just a pocket-sized um, Declaration of Independence. I'm not entirely sure when it was made. It feels very nice. This paper is kind of like... You know, if you ever buy like really old books, like the ones from the really early 1900s or even before that, this is the kind of paper that they use and I love that kind of paper because it just feels so nice to the finger and also just turning it just feels so nice. But yeah, it's just a little declaration of independence. That is this little booklet, not much to say. It's a little folded, oh, but um, yeah, that's that. And then we've got this little ladies banquet, little, I guess a program, like invitation program, but it's got these American flags on there and it says Memorial Hall, Rushville, what is that, New York, Friday, December 7th, 1917, under Auspices Ladies Aid Society, MC Church. I'm not entirely sure if that's, I read that right, but <laughs> this um, font is a very hard to read. So it looks like, yeah, this is like their little program. So this is the menu for that um, event. And it says, though we eat little flesh and drink no wine, yet let's be merry from Shakespeare. So it looks like they had quite a lot to eat. They had some clear broth. That doesn't sound <laughs> too great. It just sounds like water. But um, they also had celery and wafers. I'm assuming those are like kind of like the appetizers or something to get you a little hungry, get you a little going. They had cream chicken, rosettes, escalloped potatoes, cranberry jelly, bread and butter sandwiches, pineapple nut salad. Ooh, that sounds good. Banquet wafers. And then for dessert, caramel ice cream, coconut layer cake, coffee, and mints. So they had quite a lot of food. And then their toasts for that event um, says, the earth's noblest thing, a woman perfected. And then, so the toast mistress was Miss Carrie Loomis. And then there's the New York State Women's Responsibilities as Citizens speaker. And then um, our aims. And then there's just a bunch of people speaking. So it seems like it's very much so a woman's empowerment kind of a banquet literally since it's called the ladies banquet but very interesting and then on the back here there's this little i guess poem and it says the bravest battle and it's by joaquin miller so you can pause the video real quick and give that a read if you would like but the font is gorgeous but this is awesome and is really great quality it's really really thick cardstock and it is from 1917 so pretty cool to have something like this you know in my collection Sorry about the airplane. Once again, I live near JFK, so, you know, you hear airplanes every now and again in my videos. The next two little cards here are little postcards, I guess, and they look like they are from Italy. I think they're just one of those um, postcards that commemorate stamps that come out. So right here it says Cartolina Postale. Postale? I don't know. I don't speak Italian, so sorry if I butcher um, that. But it has this little stamp here of... Francesco Vigo and then this one right here of him as well he does not look very happy at all <laughs> but that is that little card and then this one looks like a Statue of Liberty and it just says Liberté that's interesting that an Italian stamp will have the Statue of Liberty <laughs> on it unless they have something similar no it definitely is the Statue of Liberty but these are just pretty cool, and I really was obsessed with postcards for quite a bit, so that's why I have those. Then we've got some little game cards, because I was really into buying these little old 
game cards because I was putting them in my junk journals and also including them in the ephemera, like a uh, vintage ephemera packs that I was making and selling on eBay. And oh, my voice is going, but I still have some for sale on my eBay if you guys are interested. <clears throat> but sorry about that, my voice just like kind of went. But um, I do have some ephemera uh, packs still available on my eBay where you can get some of these pieces as well. And if you want to check that out, I can include the link to that in the description box below if I remember. But if not, you can definitely check it out on my website at simplyrosen.com. I have a little tab there that says like shops or something. And it has a link to my Amazon shop, my Poshmark, and my eBay. So yeah, um, a lot of the reason why I was picking up so much um, vintage and ephemera goodies is because A, I was making junk journals at the time. And I became really, really obsessed with having real, you know, vintage and antique ephemera for those. And then I also started selling some junk journal like packs of vintage and antique ephemera on my eBay for other people to kind of just use for their own junk journals or whatever they want to use it for or just collect. And yeah, so some pretty cool stuff in there. I've sold a little bit of those over time. And yeah, this is one of the things that I liked to include in those. But, um, so yeah, I bought a lot of vintage like game like things that had game cards because I think they look really great and they're cool little additions to your little junk journals. But this one is from the game Funny Bones and of course the colors of this just reached out to me. They're just so pretty and they're really really thick. They're like cardboard, but they are from 1968, the Parker Brothers. And I'm pretty sure they still make um, board games nowadays, but this is what uh, they look like. They're just huge game cards. I think what you're supposed to do is um, like someone will pick a card and then they have to put their ear bone connected to the other person's shoulder bone. And then this one is the knee bone connected to the hand bone. So you, oh, that's kind of, <laughs> looks a little sketchy because he's just like, almost looks like he's going up this girl's skirt, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and then this one is just like the Joker card kind of thing, but I really liked the graphic on there. He was so adorable. So I kept a couple of those cards so that I wouldn't give away the entire set because I do like to keep some of the sets um, in addition to giving some away. So that is it for my little um, sharing of my vintage goodies this time around if you guys enjoyed definitely leave a like and subscribe so you can see the future ones that i post and i also have a playlist with the previous ones that i've posted if you want to check that out i'll have it in the cards and also in the description box below if you want to check that out and see some more vintage goodies because i know i like looking at them so <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed once again and i'll see you guys in my next video bye